So, how often should you train? That's what I'm covering in today's video. Hey everyone, welcome to Lifting Explained, where I discuss fitness backed by research. Now, how often do you really need to lift weights? Well, according to the research, it's actually not as often as you might think. Now, one thing I wanna cover is what I mean by frequency. Often people think it means how often you should just go to the gym and train. However, what it actually means in this case is how often you train a muscle group each week. So how often you train chest, how often you train back, etc, etc. Muscle group frequency is what I will be discussing and this is what the research covers. Now what does the research actually say? In December of 2018, a systematic review and meta-analysis, meaning the collection and review of the most up-to-date research on a topic, was published by Brad Schoenfeld et al. The analysis was conducted using 25 studies and concluded the following. Results showed no significant difference between higher and lower frequency on a volume equated basis. Moreover, no significant differences were seen between frequencies of training across all categories when taking into account direct measures of growth in those considered resistance trained and when segmenting into training for the upper body and lower body. So in short, it's not training frequency that really affects muscle hypertrophy, it's actually your overall volume throughout the week. The researchers found that there is no significant difference in gains between training a muscle group once per week versus two or three times per week. Furthermore, another study published in July 2019 made the same conclusion. Gederson, Gomez, et al. compared two groups. One group that used a split body routine where each muscle group was only trained once per week and another group that used a total body split where each muscle group was trained every session. Both groups trained five days per week, so group two was training their muscle groups five times a week versus group one at just once per week. Both groups performed the same exercises, number of sets, and a rep range of 8 to 12. The researchers found that again, there was no significant difference in muscle mass between the two groups over the course of the study. They concluded the following. Our findings suggest a set number greater than or equal to 10 sets per week performed to volitional failure, 8 to 12 rep max, instead of training frequency, is an important stimulus to promote muscle mass and strength gains in well-trained subjects when the sets and intensity are equated per week. If we dive into the research even further, two more studies have made similar conclusions. One by Bill Camel et al. from May 2018, and another again by Brad Schoenfeld et al. from just this past month, August 2019. In the study from Campbell et al, they concentrated primarily on strength gains instead of hypertrophy, but they did make conclusions based on whether or not fat-free mass, meaning muscle, increased or not. The researchers took two groups, where one did resistance training three times per week, and the other six times per week. It's important to mention that both groups completed the same amount of volume throughout the week. It was concluded that high frequency six times per week resistance training does not seem to offer additional strength and hypertrophy benefits over lower frequency three times per week when volume and intensity are equated. In the most recent study by Schoenfeld et al., the researchers again concluded that similar hypertrophy was achieved between the two groups, at least in upper body mass. There was some evidence in the study suggest that a higher frequency training protocol may provide a slight advantage in lower body hypertrophy though. But it seems more research needs to be completed to provide a more accurate conclusion. The bottom line, overall volume and intensity are what's most important, not necessarily frequency. Now, interestingly enough, Dr. Mike Israel, a well-respected and very knowledgeable exercise physiologist, has made different conclusions from those in the studies mentioned earlier. In the direct studies on muscle growth, and I mean direct, where they actually measure 
the rate of muscle growth that actually occurs, the building process at various time points after training, pretty much none of these studies have picked up muscle growing in any situation much longer than about three days. The idea that muscle can grow for a week is pretty much hogwash. It's never been supported. Mechanistically, it'd be very difficult to find out how exactly that would work. Most of the training studies actually show muscle growth lasts less time between one and three days somewhere. So Dr. Israel is arguing that waiting an entire week to train a muscle again would be counterproductive and may actually lead to you losing some of the gains you made by the end of that week. Therefore, he recommends a frequency of two to three times per week for each muscle group for optimal growth. So which information is right? Well, it really comes down to the individual and their lifestyle and schedule. If you are only able to make it to the gym twice per week, a total body split is most likely the best choice in this case, as this would make hitting the needed volume for that week more manageable. Remember, as the studies mentioned, volume must be equated for optimal growth as well. Now, if you're able to train three days a week, the needed volume would be that much easier. Your choice of training split is also a bit more flexible, as you could do a total body split or a two-day upper body, one-day lower body split. Now, the second split would mean your lower body muscle groups would only be hit once a week. So if Dr. Israel is correct, then you may not obtain optimal hypertrophy for your lower body this way. Your best bet is to try both splits and see which one works best for you and which one you feel is providing the most gains, as one split will work better for others and vice versa. And finally, if you are able to train four days a week, then your training split options are that much greater. You could still do total body or an upper body lower body split twice that week, or a more traditional bro split, which means each muscle group is hit once that week. Again, see which one works best for you. Remember, there are plenty of people who have success with a bro split. Look at most bodybuilders. This is the type of training they use, and obviously they have made plenty of gains with it. They also have a very high total volume throughout the week, of course, so don't forget that. This is not to say that Dr. Israel is wrong, just that it can work for certain people, while others may need to use one of the other splits for optimal growth and the needed volume. Now I'm not going to cover training five or six days a week, since the studies mentioned show that this does not provide additional benefit, and you can still hit each muscle group two to three times per week at a four day split. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If there's a specific topic you want me to cover, make sure you mention it down below, and make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. This is Lifting Explained. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next week.